Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the information session on chip scale optical frequency comps, which is a transition topic in the European Innovation Council work program of 2023. So this meeting will be recorded. Uh, and uh, after the meeting, the recording of the slides will be available at the uh, event page, the same page to which you connected now. Please, uh, if you have any questions, please submit them in Slido, slide.do, and use the event code challenges, because today's session is especially designed for you to ask questions to the program manager for this topic on uh, optical frequency comps. Uh, Isabel uh, Objeta. So uh, my name is Annemarie Sasse. I'm the head of unit of the program manager's office in the European Innovation Council. And I will do a very short introduction to the European Innovation Council. And after that, we have the main topic of today's session, which is the, the optical frequency comp information uh, session. After that, uh, we will answer all the questions that you have put into the into the Slido. And uh, we expect to end well at the most around one o'clock, but maybe it will be uh, a little bit earlier around uh, 1230. Let's see how many questions that you have. So the European Innovation Council, it is a 1.6 billion euro program and it runs from 2021 to 2027. And the main aim of the European Innovation Council is to bring the, the good research that Europe is doing to the market as soon as possible. And in order to do that, there we have three different uh, instruments. Uh, the first one is uh, the Pathfinder, where we focus on uh, early, um, early research for possible groundbreaking uh, breakthroughs. But it's really still research at a low technology readiness level from, from one to four. And the second instrument that we have, and that is relevant for the session of today, it's called transition. It is for those projects where there is already a good uh, proof of concept developed in Horizon Europe or maybe uh, through the European Research Council. Um, but it still needs further maturation of the technology, but also of the of the business model behind it and to be ready for the market. And that is the transition tool. Also, there you will uh, get a, a grant. Um, and um, the idea is to move up the technology readiness level from four to six. The third instrument that we have, it is Accelerator. It is for SMEs, in particular startups, who want to scale up their innovations uh, to the market. So uh, there you do not only receive a grant, but it's blended finance. And that means there's also the possibility for uh, equity investments. And um, the ticket of, uh, of accelerator, um, Accelerator uh, yeah, uh, contracts can be up to 15 million euro, which and sometimes even more, which is really necessary for for SMEs to to scale up. So there, the TRL level is from six to nine. We go to the next slide. So the EIC wants to uh, accompany uh, beneficiaries in their entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey going from Pathfinder to Accelerator and then from Pathfinder to Transition to Accelerator. And uh, as I said, uh, in each of these three steps, the technology readiness level goes up, but also the business readiness level goes up. And whereas in Pathfinder, the focus is really on what and on research. Uh, so what can the technology bring to us? Uh, how can we optimize uh, this technology to solve certain uh, problems? If you move to accelerator, the question will be why? And that's the question that uh, business people are asking themselves. Why would my customers be interested to, um, to buy my product or my service? Uh, so to, uh, to identify the unique selling point of your, your product of service. So, 
with these three instruments, we also move up the business readiness level. Can we go next? Uh, so this focus on uh, on bringing to the market, it's really specific for, for the European Innovation Council work program. On this slide, you see the whole program that we have in 2023. This is our work program. You see, again, the three instruments that we have, Pathfinder, Transition, and Accelerator. You can see that uh, Transition is the smallest of the three instruments. We are dedicating this year uh, 126 million euro to that. But you can also see that each of these three instruments, they have an open part and they have a challenge part. And the open part, it's fully bottom up. Um, proposers can submit proposal on any topic as long as it's related to deep tech and then in the areas of health, green tech and uh, digital, which is in the end very broad. Um, and we have a challenge part and the challenge part, it is uh, designed by the program managers that we have in the European Innovation Council. And uh, the, the program managers, they um, identify challenges uh, in which they believe Europe should invest more because we have a good potential base of technologies uh, available, but, but not enough companies yet. And um, on the right hand side, you can see all the challenges that we have in the 2023 work program. And now we will talk about the transition challenge, chip scale, optical frequency comps. Um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to say that for all the other uh, challenges, we have also had uh, information days. Uh, this morning we had one on um, responsible electronics. And this afternoon, we will have one at two o'clock on the accelerator topic, emerging semiconductor and quantum technology components. So if you're interested in any of these challenges, please watch the recording or, or still participate this afternoon. So with this introduction, I now want to hand over to uh, Isabel Obieta, who is our program manager for uh, responsible electronics and also of this challenge on, on transition. Yes, good morning. Welcome to all. Thank you very much for attending this session. Uh, yeah, the goal of the info day today is to provide some background to the challenge, also to explain the challenge as presented in the work program. Answer, and I would also like to answer to your questions regarding this uh, specific challenge call. It is not to provide you feedback of the appropriateness of your individual proposal to this challenge call. So, uh, yeah, uh, the legal basis of uh, the challenges and uh, on, uh, well, uh, all that is going to be shown today is the EIC Work Program 2023, to which you have to address uh, for any questions that uh, you might uh, have in order to apply and to submit a proposal. So this is the legal basis. This is important. So yeah, uh, I'm going to specifically go through one, my first part on the EIC transition, both open and challenges in general, and then I will go to the uh, to this specific challenge. So first of all, I wanted to clearly describe the different pathways the, the EIC transition supports. So there's one which is like the, the most common one and most known, which is you transition to technology. So meaning that you go further and develop the high impact technology up to TRL 5.6. So as Marie was saying, it's prepared for the next step, which is accelerator. There's another pathway which could be to transition to market to further elaborate the market opportunity of research results and the agreements needed to commercialize the opportunity in the future. This is, of course, they are all interlinked, but it could also happen that you have this, and uh, this is, of course, led by an SME. And uh, finally, you could also have a transition to entrepreneurship to turn research results into a viable product. So looking for a suitable business model and maybe even creating the, the spin-off at this point. So those are the three uh, pathways that uh, could uh, jump into this uh, uh, top instrument. So who can apply to, to a transition? This is very specific of transition. And I suggest that you check the eligibility of the projects that, that can be the basis of your transition proposal, because you have to be based on a, a projects that are coming from a specific uh, calls. And in this case, it has been open. At the beginning, it was just coming from Pathfinder or from uh, 
from ERC proof of concepts, but now it's open also to Horizon Europe or to Horizon 2020 project, which was not the case last year. So I, I recommend that you really go through the um, through the this year's call. There are some specific uh, uh, constraints in terms of the dates of finalization of the previous project and the start of the eligible uh, project. So again, eh, please go 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 to the um, to the work program and and, and check if. Uh, your your eligible project basis of your transition proposal is the adequate one. So important to this topic is the fact that you can apply even if you are not part of the initial consortium of those eligible projects. So that there are researchers who have developed proof of concepts as part of their Horizon Europe or their ERC project, but they are not so confident to go to the market. While there are SMEs or startups or even entrepreneurs that want to benefit from those project results. So if you are interested and you have not been part of our previous consortium, use the list of eligible projects in the EIC transition webpage. You can also use, for example, the Innovation Radar webpage or the ERC research info system to search for those projects. And, and if you find an interesting innovation that uh, you would like to develop further, our recommendation is that uh, on one side, you talk to your NCP, to your national contact point. There are specific national contact points for, for the different instruments. But on the other side, you need to contact the owners of the technology and explore if an alignment of interest and collaboration is possible in order to go forward before you start to write your proposal. So really get in contact with them and you need a letter of commitment at some point uh, included in your proposal. Um, in general, I think the numbers have been given by uh, Amari, like the general budget is 128 million, uh, divided between the open calls and the challenges, approximately uh, 60-40 more or less. So there are three challenge calls this time. Uh, this, uh, the one that we are going to talk about this now, this chip scale optical frequency comp, but there's another one on environmental intelligence. And there was another one in full scale micro nanobio devices for medical and medical research applications. So uh, grants can go up to 2.5 million or even more if well justified. And uh, you can apply at any time, but there are two cutoffs. One is in April the 12th and the other one is September the 27th. Um, so the, there are several types of consortia that can submit a proposal, uh, even mono, mono beneficiaries, but up to four or five beneficiaries also could make a consortia. So I, again, I recommend that you check the eligibility conditions in the work program because uh, it depends on the countries, etc. So I recommend that you really go through the work program. So going specific to this specific challenge on chip scale optical frequency com, I'm going to explain the rationale behind it. So for, for that, I have uh, taken this graph from a very recent review from uh, Nature Photonics that shows that the uh, optical frequency comps have been around for a while, including the integrated ones. So that there are like two big categories. You can see those uh, in the upper part or in the lower part. So one are the, the ones generated by nonlinear parametric gain and the ones based on uh, semiconductor mode lock lasers. So we are looking for those that can be integrated with other functionalities and importantly are compatible with wafer scale integration. So those, those are the main, the main uh, bullet points. So over, over the past decade, photonic integrated uh, frequency comps have made remarkable advances and have demonstrated potential for many applications, ranging from coherent communication to parallel LIDAR or neuromorphic computing. Uh, further applications are emerging in spectroscopy and in sensing nowadays, and, uh, but anyhow, basic challenges remain to achieve the full potential of this technology. So th these include, just to name a few, the development of novel nonlinear platforms, improved conversion efficiencies, extension to new wavelength uh, ranges, new ways of integrating the chip scale comps with other functionalities like uh, the modulators, for example, and of course, the COM designs that are compatible with wafer scale manufacturing and with novel materials in the field in a reliable and cost-effective way. And this is 
basically the like the the background of the of the topic no so in the next slides i'm going to go through the call as it reads so the overall goal of this challenge is to advance technological developments of the light states in driven non-linear systems and to develop novel platforms for cheap scale frequency calls and the specific objectives of the challenge aim at supporting successful transition from experimental proof of concept or technology validated in lab to technology validated or demonstrated in relevant environment. Again, eh, we are in a transition project, so it's TRL 3, 4, all the way to TRL 5. I will not read the whole call. I would like to highlight the importance of developing concepts for specific applications, as the developments will mainly be application driven. The applicant should identify what are the limits of the current paradig paradigms, they are trying to improve and propose relevant metrics or KPIs to track progress and demonstrate success or a superior paradigm compared with current state of the art. With regards to the expected outcomes and impacts in the call, in the topic, so this challenge aims to foster skills, talent and innovation in semiconductor technologies, specifically for using advanced materials and the integration of photonics and microelectronics in cutting edge chips. This challenge should lead to novel results, deep tech innovation for next generation chip technologies that will enable new applications, providing strong competitive advantage for future innovative startups and SMEs that the EIC can further support towards scale up through its accelerator scheme as already explained by Anne-Marie. An exploitation strategy, including the formal IP protection, this is very important, and a credible business model its initial validation and a business plan are also expected as an outcome of the project with the goal of attracting private investors and industrial partners. So you, you, we want that at the finalization of this project, you are prepared for the private investors and industrial partners that they can, they can really pick up your, your, um, your developments and, and, and allow you to go further. So th there has been a large investment in research in photonics, not only in Europe, but, but of course also in Europe. And uh, we have detected that there are many EU funded research projects that could be in a good position to submit a proposal to this challenge, to this transition challenge, and advance the technologies towards relevant applications for the future of semiconductor photonics in Europe. I think it's very timely to transfer advanced optical frequency comm systems from the laboratory to the wider world at this point. So in, in this slide, I wanted to highlight one of the EIC accelerator projects, which is maybe it's uh, nearly finished now. So it's from Pilot Photonics Limited in Ireland, and uh, it deals with optical comms by photonic integration. So they have a patent protection of a versatile optical comm source that it's very suitable for long haul optical networks. So, so I, I, I have uh, also added some uh, interesting news in the media. Another example, this one is coming from the transition scheme and it's a project called STAND for a standalone soliton microcom system. So they want to focus on exploring market potential of these devices. But th th there are many other projects under Pathfinder or even under the ERC proof of concept that might be also ready to jump into a transition proposal. Some of the acronyms, acronyms from, uh, from uh, Pathfinder are CSOC, Femtochip, or TerraSlide, but just to name a few, that, that there, are, there are indeed there are many projects. We have been analyzing that and there are many projects that could um, already jump into this instrument and we will we are really welcoming them so um now i, I think it's interesting that we think about uh, uh, how to the the applicant's journey go for an eic transition challenge which is a little bit uh, different uh, to pathfinder and still different also to accelerator so you you, you see that there are two cutoff uh, dates april and september i think i mentioned already this but um, indeed, two important evaluation steps, like, like uh, number three, where the remote one occurs, and there is number four in this slide, which is the interview with the evaluators and also with the program managers. So at step one, 
for the challenges, there are specific considerations under excellence and impact related to the relevance of uh, your proposal objectives and applications to the challenge. And at step two, the jury will again analyze additional considerations towards how relevant the proposal is in its contribution to, to those specific objectives of the challenge. In this case, being advancing or maturing novel technologies with higher conversion efficiency or extensions in the wavelengths. So if the proposal is maturing the frequency comms technology to include integration options for other functional elements, and again, how do they exploit the precision of optical frequency comms in the new industrial applications? They are mentioned applications in integrated multi-channel light sources for optical communication in data centers, which of course is probably the most common one, but also highly efficient sensors that measure mid-infrared molecular spectra or optical atomic clocks on a chip. All of them very relevant for the future of the photonic integrated, uh, integrated photonics in Europe. So it, it's essential that during the jury interview, applicants provide clarity in the technology maturity, both at the beginning, but also at the end of the project, what you are expecting. And also the business objectives need, need to be really credible. Another important uh, point in transition is the IPR ownership. And also you will be asked many times about the risks, not only the, technicals one, the technical ones, but also the business related should be very well analyzed. Uh, finally, also the, the team is also well examined in, in general in the jury interviews and also the technical milestones together with other aspects of your work package, budget, allocation. But uh, take care of the IPR, IPR situation, especially for these uh, devices, for example, and the risks. I, I suggest and I recommend that you really work on, on, uh, on those specifically. And uh, some lessons learned from previous evaluations. Um, I think it's important because uh, this is quite a new instrument, so uh, it's important that uh, we share with you some of the some of the lessons learned. One of them is the need for focus on impact and business potential. I think I mentioned it previously. So in this case, for example, I think application will drive the deployment of your novelty, and uh, so really the impact on, on the business potential is very important. Also, the business model and the market analysis. So, a preliminary version should be already included in the proposal, and that can be redefined and refined alongside the technology development while uh, you go through the uh, your pro through your project if you are selected. And finally, the the technology readiness level. So, level three is the minimum starting point; it cannot be less. And level five is really too high as a starting point. TRL4 is in general uh, a, a very good maturity te technology maturity level. So also uh, a little bit of the highlight on, uh, on lessons learned. The analysis of previous call have uh, given us that the lack of understanding of the market and competition are the main weaknesses. So especially relevant for this challenge is the selection of your application and why your solution has a unique value proposition if compared to other solutions. So if compared to your competition. So this is extremely important at this point. Also the novelty and disruptiveness is important, but also the team. The consortium is prepared to develop the technology towards the application, but also to investigate the market and the business adequately. So take care of those things. So with this, uh, I would like to finish. Here are some useful links to the work program and to the general info day that took place on December the 13th for the more general aspects of the, of the call. And um, with this, uh, I think we can uh, open the Q&A session. Uh, at this point, my colleague from the transition unit, Ivica Kubik, will uh, help me with uh, answering the Slido questions that you have already posed. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Julian and Jenny. So, Ivica, I'm not sure if you are ready somewhere. Yeah, I'm ready, and the first one is, is quite simple. So, yeah, basically, that one is for you. I'm going to read it because I'm <laughs> okay, not sure yeah, if please. everybody can read. So, apply uh, Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe on topic. To whom can you ask if the project is eligible if it is not so clear? For uh, challenges, it could be 
quite clear because all research Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe projects are eligible. For open, there is a list on our website with, uh, with some restrictions to some particular tools and, and topics. But for challenges, you're on the safe side. All uh, research projects are eligible. You, you have this constraint that it, uh, if, if, uh, it must not end it, uh, early, uh, before two years, before the call deadline. And if it's an ongoing project, it must be already you know, established for more than one year. So this, this time constraint is still uh, applied. The second one, maybe it's also for you. Does the jury also look at a possible follow-up in EIC accelerator equal need of equity or in general, the total amount needed? In, indeed. So it could be also quite important because uh, it's uh, you should present some, you know, commercialization roadmap uh, initial. And in this, it's always, you know, like... Uh, uh, there is a need for for further investment, and this is uh, actually this is uh, this will be looked uh, by by the by the jury members. So it's it's a, I would say it's a it's a it's a not a cornerstone, but it's quite important. Okay, so we have a new one. Oops, I think there was a one there. Was it not the case, Jenny? No. Yes, at the moment there was a error. Yes, there was a question on how can I find partners? Yes. How can I find partners because uh, they didn't feel uh, that they could do everything on their own? There is also at, uh, at our website, there is also a, a link that where you can apply for this. And then you can also search if already some applying, applying, you know, for, you know, for searching partners for a, uh, for a, for a consortium that uh, that will apply for this call. Do we have more? Okay, we have more. <laughs> what about joint undertaking, BBI, etc.? Can they apply? Uh, for this, I'm not. I'm not sure if if they have fun because it's it's a different funding, but. Uh, We'll get back to you. Get back to you, and this should be checked. I'm not sure for this. Okay. Are the success rates higher for transition than for the other funding schemes? Uh, yes, it is. It's a, it's a little bit higher even for open. For open is about ten uh, percent, and for challenges, it's 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 it really depend on on challenge challenge uh, basis but it's uh, it's even higher than this uh, 10 percent that we have for open thanks Ivita. can one apply for both deadlines uh you should receive results within uh, for uh not for within 13 or the, within four months so if you have time yes you can apply we don't have uh, we, we don't uh, don't have these constraints that you cannot apply like in uh, like in accelerator. But you know, I suppose that if you reject it, uh, and especially if you below the, the threshold uh, in the first call, that you need to you know uh, to work more on your proposal. So it's also it's uh, it depends how much time you will you will have. Indeed. So if, if there aren't any other questions, I think we can uh, close the, uh, the session now. So uh, any questions to your national contact points, we recommend that you contact them for all those specific eligibility questions. And they can also propose some advice on, uh, on your if you are targeting the correct uh, challenge, etc., so we recommend that you go to your national contact points. And with that, I would like to thank you all. Thank you, Ivica. Thank you, Marie, and uh, thank you, Juliana and Jenny in the backstage. And uh, thank you all for your um, attending this uh, presentation. And Marie, I'm not sure if you want to. Yeah, I, I just would like to add because since transition is really very specific. Um, and many of the questions that you had were on, uh, let's say, how to apply and not so much related to the to the frequency comp topic. 
I want to advise you to also watch the recording of the general info day where more is explained about uh, transition and how to how to find partners um, and uh, and eligibility. So please look also at that. Transition is a very specific instrument uh, and, and you really need to understand um, your your eligibility. So thank you very much for your participation to this and uh, we hope to receive some good proposals of you. Yeah, good success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.